Okay, what's going on guys? It's Pixelated and I know it's about that time now. We're cutting it real close. It's about to be holiday season and we're about to get into unwrapping gifts mode. And I know for a fact that some of you got your hands on a PS5 this holiday season or you know someone who has or you know someone that might be getting one and you're looking for the perfect complimentary present to go with it for them or for yourselves. Well, as you know, we cover headphones for the PS5 on this channel designed to take advantage of PS5's 3D audio tech. We've covered the Arctis 7P and the Arctis 7P Plus by SteelSeries, as well as Sony's PlayStation Pulse 3D headset, all designed to take advantage of PlayStation's built-in 3D audio engine known as the Tempest 3D audio engine. But what you might not have known is that SteelSeries also offers a premium version of its headset the Arctis Pro Wireless. And something else you might not have known is that I've used the word headset way too many times already. All right, maybe you knew that. Now the Arctis Pro Wireless offers a plethora of features for those of you that might be thinking that the Arctis 7P is lacking in those features, or you just want a headset that is full of features that you would have never thought of yourself. And if you happen to be one of those people or by the end of the video, you decide that this is for you, I've left a link in the description where you can go ahead and check these out. Now let's figure out how this headset stacks up against other PS5 3D audio friendly gaming headphones. But before we do that, make sure to pass by that like button if you happen to enjoy the video at any point, Make sure to get friendly with the subscribe button for more videos and make sure to ring that noti bell so you don't miss out on future videos. As always, we're going to be judging the Arctis Pro Wireless in a handful of categories like audio quality and features, but first let's start off with comfort. Okay, starting off with the comfort, this headset basically carries over the same signature design that you see on the Arctis 7P. It has the fabric elastic band that supports your head via tension, and for whatever reason, it always just feels better to have this band on your head as opposed to touching the actual steel band or touching an actual head band on any other headset. I don't know what it is about the suspension of a fabric elastic headband like this that makes it seem like it's much lighter than a typical headset. It's like voodoo or something. Kids, don't believe in voodoo. Unless it has to do with this headset, then it's, it's real. The cloth ear cups are back just like on the Arctis 7P, except this time these cloth ear cups have a little more shape to them. They're stitched differently. You can see there's sort of a separate stitching here to create a better, more defined shape. And just by pressing on it, I can tell that these are more dense. They are more padded than the Arctis 7P. So the cushioning has actually taken a step up, which is perfect because this is a more premium version of the headset. Now moving on to the fit, this is an excellent fitting headset. Again, adjusting this strap is a little cumbersome. Of course, when you're putting it on, you kind of have to remove it and sort of do a few adjustments to find the right fit. But once you find the right fit, this is the perfect headset on your head. It's so comfortable. It feels so lightweight. And yes, it is a bit cumbersome to constantly adjust the strap to figure out what the right fit is, as opposed to the traditional way of adjusting headsets where you can slide the ear cups up and down through a notch mechanism or some sort of sliding mechanism. But I think the trade-off is perfectly fine once you figure out the right fit for you. And even though the headband is an entirely steel band, it doesn't really matter because this thing will support your head the entire time, this elastic band, and it'll make you feel super comfortable. It almost feels like the steel band isn't even there. This headset has a moderate to low clamping force. Now, that's great for comfort, but it's not good for headphone sway. If I wasn't wearing a hat right now, the headphones would be swaying a lot more. They would feel a little bit more loose. It's not necessarily intuitive when you're moving around, or if you look down, this headband will definitely slide down your head a little bit, or the ear cups will sort of rotate a little bit. But when you're Sitting down in gaming, none of that is an issue. All right, moving on to the audio quality. This is the category that will make or break this headset for several people. Of course, I mean, it's a headset. Of course, we're judging it based on its audio quality. <laughs> now, before we move on, I want to make sure you update the headset to its latest firmware. To do this, you connect the base station to your computer and you download SteelSeries engine software, and then it'll let you update it to the latest software. So do that because you will need that for the PS5. I'm not exactly sure what they do, but I'm sure they fine tune whatever the software is that interacts with this headset to make it work better with the PS5. So go ahead and do that first. Now I've played quite a few games with this, some older games like Modern Warfare and some newer games like Returnal and Demon Souls that are PS5 exclusives. In a general sense, comparing this to the Arctis 7P, the audio quality is a little crisper. In some regards, when you hear sound effects or when you hear a lot of sound effects happening at one 
one time for whatever reason the Arctis Pro Wireless can handle it just a notch better than the Arctis 7P. The Arctis 7P still does a great job but the Arctis Pro Wireless handles a lot of sound without it feeling too overwhelmed or a little distorted which tends to be an issue with the Arctis 7P if you listen to it at really high volumes. For most people that's not going to be an issue because you won't hear the distortion unless you're listening to the Arctis 7P at really high volumes. However the Arctis Pro Wireless at higher volumes will not exhibit that same distortion. Now the Arctis Pro Wireless does handle directional audio well in games like Warzone, in games like Ghost of Tsushima, when a Mongol is yelling out from somewhere or an enemy in Warzone is walking around you and you hear the footsteps from a specific direction, you can definitely figure out where they're coming from on the Arctis Pro Wireless. However, I did have to change the audio format to Dolby or DTS aka Dolby True Surround instead of linear PCM. And I'm not sure how much that prevents the 3D audio performance. I don't really know the specific details of how that works, but because I had to switch the audio format to DTS, I suspect somehow this does not give me the pure 3D audio experience. I could be wrong about this, but I do recall at some point I heard that Dolby or DTS does not represent 3D audio the same way just the PS5's built-in 3D audio tech does. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on that one, leave it in the comments because I really do wanna know. Now with the Arctis Pro Wireless, when I'm playing games like Returnal where there are a lot of sound effects, you hear a lot of things going on around you. Most headphones, it's going to feel a little overwhelming. With the Arctis Pro Wireless, it doesn't feel overwhelming at all and it's really easy to pinpoint where the enemies are coming from. And when I say really easy, I mean like kind of easy because to be fair, the Arctis 7P actually does do a better job than this. It's kind of weird to me that even though the Arctis Pro Wireless can handle sound and a lot of sound better than the Arctis 7P, the directional audio on the Arctis 7P beats it out by just a notch. Games like Demon Souls and Spider-Man sounded great when I'm fighting enemies. It's just a great immersive experience. In those games, I didn't really look for too much directional audio. I didn't really need it. You do get it though in games like Demon's Souls sometimes it helps you figure out where the enemy is if they're off screen and you hear them to your right or left or behind you somewhere. Again this headset shares a lot of similarities with the Arctis 7P. You get great clear crisp sound effects with rich bass. Just an overall great experience but I still think the Arctis 7P wins out by just a little bit when it comes to directional audio. It almost feels like the Pro Wireless delivers a more pleasing entertainment audio experience whereas the Arctis this 7P has the leg up on competitive multiplayer games for that directional audio. However, the Arctis 7P is also still great for an entertaining audio experience. So if you want to play single player story driven games, it sounds great on the 7P. It sounds better on the Pro Wireless, but the 7P is not a bad choice as well. Overall, this is still a great contender, even though I don't know how pure the 3D audio experience is with this headset, the sound quality is top notch. And as with every time we check out audio quality, we're going to check out the mic quality. So here's the mic test. All right, so this is the mic test for the Arctis Pro Wireless. Now, this mic shares a lot of characteristics to the Arctis 7P. It's very clear you won't have any trouble communicating with your friends or teammates in games like Warzone. However, it does overpronounce certain things like your P's, Q's, and S's are really pronounced. And that brings me to the first downside of this mic, and that is that it overpronounces those consonants to the point where they sound really sharp and to the point where it almost feels like everything has this sort of hissing characteristic, sort of like an air airline pilot's mic. Now I've said this before about the Arctis 7P, however for whatever reason it feels like it's more pronounced here, it's more emphasized here on the Arctis Pro Wireless. I'm not entirely sure why. And the other downside is that for whatever reason this mic picks up a lot of noise just like it did on the Arctis 7P. Now again, my friends, my teammates on Warzone and other multiplayer games haven't had any issues. They haven't complained about it before. I've asked them about it. And it's also because Warzone has a built-in noise gate that you can adjust to your liking. And I'm sure other multiplayer games have that as well. However, that may not be however that may not be an option in every multiplayer game so it is kind of annoying to hear that i mean it's a bit of a nuisance to the point where i'm not even recording this with 50 percent mic volume because of how much it was picking up i've reduced the mic volume to maybe 40 percent somewhere around there but i can do a quick background noise test just so you can see what it sounds like All right, so let me know what you guys think. Okay, that was the mic test. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Now moving on to the features, this headset is feature rich and it really puts a lot of headsets in this price range to shame. 
and to be honest the air gets pretty thin up here once you get to this price point there aren't really that many headsets to begin with but even then this thing is insane let's just get into the features so you can see what i'm talking about so the first feature we have is the ability to switch to eq on the fly now this headset comes with a base station that is separate from the headset that is how the headset mainly interacts with the gaming console and this base station allows you to do so many things it's such a great design because it basically removes all the buttons on the headset except for this giant grooved mic mute button and this volume scroll wheel of course it doesn't it's not really a button but you get what i'm saying basically all the functionality has been transferred onto the base station so if you want to switch side tones you want to increase side tones or you want to decrease them or you want to increase or decrease the volume you can also do that through the base station pretty much everything you used to do with the buttons on your headset you can just do with the base station aside from the mic mute button and of course the power on and off button you definitely need that on the headset you can connect multiple audio sources to this headset with the base station for example you can connect the base station to your ps5 and your pc and you can switch back and forth between the two for what to use with the headset you can connect to multiple audio sources at the same time for example you can use the base station to connect to your pc and your ps5 and you can toggle between the two to use with the headset while having your phone connected to it via bluetooth at all times so it's perfect for those times where maybe you're waiting for a phone call and you're worried you're gonna miss it because you're in a heated fight with the homies but now you're not gonna miss it because it's connected into the headset itself or you can be like me and use it for music or podcasts while you're in like a free roam version of an open world game i just be weird like that sometimes next feature we have are these magnetic ear cup plates that are completely customizable in the sense that you can probably replace it with different design ear cups. Now, of course, this is not a necessary feature by any stretch of the imagination, but it's definitely a nice thing to have, and it allows you to personalize the headset the way you want to, which leads me to my next feature right here, and that is the hot swappable external battery. Now, this headset comes with two batteries, one of which is always in the base station and is constantly charging. Now, the battery life of this headset is 20 hours, which is remarkable in its own right, but the number doesn't really matter because if you have your base station plugged in and you have the second battery in there charging at all times, once this one dies, you're just going to swap to the other one right away. So you could technically play games forever <laughs> if you don't know what sleep is. Next feature is the intuitive base station menu. I've never felt more at ease using a simpler menu. There's clearly only two buttons on this thing. One is the knob that you can click in and you can twist like a dial to scroll through certain features and then there's the back button the other thing this does is it alleviates that chronic issue that every headset that is not made by playstation has with the ps5 and that is the lack of system integration all the notifications all the icons you need to let you know certain things will always be on the screen of the base station like if it's connected via bluetooth or whatever the other features are <laughs> you can figure all that out directly through the base station screen now this next one isn't technically a feature but it is on the plus side for me and that is the fact that you don't need an hdmi audio splitter to connect the base station to your ps5 while it is recommended if you want to connect your ps5 and pc to the base station if you're just connecting it to your ps5 honestly you're better off just using the usb cable and the reason for that is that if you have an hdmi 2.1 display there's no hdmi 2.1 splitter out there yet so any hdmi splitter you buy you're going to be limited to 4k 60 hertz you won't be able to get that buttery smooth 4k 120 hertz of course this won't be a big deal for people who don't have an hdmi 2.1 display and that is the vast majority right now because hdmi 2.1 displays are really hard to find right now and they're pretty expensive however for someone like me who already has an hdmi 2.1 monitor i cannot see myself using any headset that requires an hdmi audio splitter because i do not want to be limited to 60 hertz on a display that i paid pretty good money for to get that 4k 120 hertz another feature is that you can scroll through eq presets on the fly on the base station and not only that, you can literally customize and make your own EQ preset through the base station. You don't have to go to the software on your PC to do that. You can literally do it straight through the base station. Now, personally, I would still recommend going through the PC software just because it's easier. You don't want to deal with the simplified UI on the base station for customizing EQs, but it is a thing that you can do and it's not difficult at all. So if you're okay with that, you can definitely do it that way. Now, other basic features on the headset include the mic mute button, the volume scroll wheel, Steel Series proprietary audio jack, which again, don't know when it's going to be useful, but it's there. We have the 3.5 millimeter audio jack for wired connectivity if that's the way you want to go. 
that's just how you roll. And this is where the headset shows its age, it's the micro USB for charging. And of course, that doesn't really matter because it has hot swappable batteries that you're going to just constantly be swapping out all the time. So you're probably never going to charge this with a cable throughout its life. Now moving on to the pricing, now while this headset might be rich in features, it's also for the rich. I mean at 450 Canadian dollars or 350 US dollars, it's more than half the price of a PlayStation 5, if you got the PS5 at retail of course. While I do feel it is worth the value when it comes to this headset with the amount of features you get packed into it, you won't really find another headset like this. With the audio quality, the comfort, the customizability through the base station, the hot swappable batteries, you're not going to see that on any other headset and even visually through the replaceable ear cup plates. This headset does not cut corners and neither does it cut the price. While it's a steep pill to swallow, if you're looking for a premium headset that has features like connecting to your phone via Bluetooth and being connected wirelessly to your game console at the same time, having access to hot swappable batteries, which means unlimited playtime no matter what, and price is no object, then you might be looking in the right place. Now moving on to the design, the design is very similar to the Arctis 7P. Everything is pretty much the same in terms of shape. We've got the same familiar oval ear cups. We've got the same fabric elastic headband design with the steel band underneath. We've got the Velcro strap allowing you to adjust the headband. Swiveling ear cups for easy traveling. You can put this in a suitcase, briefcase, whatever, just flattening it out, or you can just set it comfortably somewhere. The differences in design here are mostly cosmetic. For example, instead of having this white and blue rubber patch, we have more of a premium, very soft black leather patch that is all black so you don't really see much of a pop and although this is supposed to signify a more premium feel a more premium material i do prefer the poppiness of the white and blue rubber patch other differences we have is the headband here is silver instead of the usual white or black if you got the black colorway we also have silver accents right here where the ear cup meets the headband and lastly the slide out mic the wire is actually white now instead of black which matches the headsets more. I feel like they should just do this on all their headsets that are white. Overall, I feel all these different design cues were added in to give this headset a more premium feel, which it kind of does, but I still prefer the black, blue, white look of the Arctis 7P. Now, when it comes to design, this base station is the true bell of the ball here. This thing is amazing. The things it can do with just a knob right here, a dial knob and one back button, is insane and the fact that it has a little bay for the battery so you can do your little hot swappable thing and you don't have to worry about your headset dying at any point okay moving on to the final pros and cons of this headset starting off with the pros the first pro is multi-connectivity you can connect this to your pc playstation 5 and have it connected to your phone via Bluetooth at the same time. That is an amazing value and has actual practical uses. So I am really impressed by that feature. The next pro is the hot swappable battery. As mentioned before, no other headset really allows you to play infinitely wirelessly as you would always have to take a break to charge it or you would have to start charging it before the battery dies, which means you can't play forever with this headset. You can play forever wirelessly, which is insane of course you don't want to do that you want to get some sleep because you want to stay alive so you know maybe 24 hours is the max you know what i don't even want to recommend 24 hours you know try to keep it reasonable but if you are one of the few that decides to not keep it reasonable i mean they're kind of encouraging it not me it's them the next pro is the overall comfort Honestly, this is best in class. This elastic headband design is just, I don't know how anyone is gonna top that. These fabric ear cups with the padding. Fabric ear cups, as you all know, is my preference now because it prevents your ears from getting too hot or from moisture buildup and from sweat. The final pro is this base station right here, as I've mentioned earlier. So much you can do with this little thing, absolutely insane. And it alleviates that chronic issue of the lack of system integration when it comes to using a wireless headset with the PS5 that is not the Pulse 3D headset. Now moving on to the cons, the first con is the mic. Now don't get me wrong, the mic is great. It sounds clear, but it has a few downsides that could be game breakers for a few people, like that slight hissing effect when you're talking and it sounds like you're an airline pilot. It's still better than many other gaming headsets, but the fact that it also picks up quite a bit of background noise and there's no built-in noise gate, you kind of have to 
hope that whatever game you're playing has a built-in noise gate that you can adjust is kind of a sticky situation it's like a gray area where you don't know whether this is gonna be a problem or not so far it hasn't been a problem for me but i wouldn't want to take that chance the next con is the price of course the price is steep at 450 canadian dollars or 350 us dollars it's not an easy pill to swallow feature heavy or not and to be honest, that's probably out of most gamers, not just budget conscious gamers, but most gamers price range just because, I mean, that's more than half the price of a PS5, as I mentioned earlier. So yeah, it's a lot of money. <laughs> the final con is that it's not really the most pure 3D audio experience because you have to switch your audio format to DTS or Dolby Audio just to get the best surround or 3D experience with this headset. I feel like it's not pure 3D, it's more like Dolby surround sound or surround audio. However, even for that, it does a great job. The sound quality is amazing. No shade thrown at those audio technologies either. Those are good too, and PS5 has them, so you're, you're fine using it too. You just might not be getting the 3D audio experience you're looking for. That's it for my review of the Arctis Pro Wireless. If you think this headset is for you, link is in the description. Once again, let me know what you guys think do you guys think this is a good headset for you to get or you think it's a little too pricey catch you in the next one pixelated has gone pro